Welcome to this session, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time it is in your country. That, by the way, uh, where are you from, guys? So we are doing this this uh, game before at the start of each session. We are asking people where are they from because it's nice, you know, to to create these these. Uh, background and environment so italy we have nico again italy oh lots of italian cardiff in the uk and colombia good morning italy oh that's an italian session lloyd <laughs> okay so our speaker indeed is um ah, houston from houston texas so we have someone from uh, outside Europe uh, that was the country so far, no, actually Colombia as well. So we have that side of the world. We have Europe side of the world. We have also um, India. That's where our speaker is from. So I would like to welcome you to this session on um, uh, held by Lloyd Parashar. He's a product senior engineer uh, at the Technip FMC uh, India, and he will tell you about uh, the company and the product, uh, and um, just a few words on the company. They take care of the complete product lifecycle management service for the oil and gas industry. Uh, in the specific, uh, uh, Lloyd um, is working with a particular product or uh, tubing hangers, that I can imagine what it is, but he will tell us <laughs> what it is and which are the challenges around the specific product, the specific knowledge needed to develop the product, as well as um, the uh, the life cycle management issue linked to the product itself. Uh, before we start, I would like to ask everybody to drop your question in the chat uh, whenever you want. Uh, I will be reading the questions at the end of uh, Lloyd's presentation. So please feel free to drop your questions. Actually, I invite you to drop your questions. And uh, uh, after Lloyd finished the presentation, we will have a discussion based on the questions that you drop in the chat. So welcome, everyone. And uh, Lloyd, the stage is yours. All right. Uh, thanks, Monica. And uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to the session here. So as Monica mentioned uh, regarding the uh, regarding the company, uh, the Technip FMC, it works in the oil and gas industry uh, for the pro uh, project uh, life cycle for the whole project life cycle, uh, starting from the feed and then the detail engineering till the maintenance and uh, decommissioning activities. I specifically work in the well completion group and I'm responsible for the product that is known as a tubing hanger product. It's the first product I would say uh, that the 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 oil uh, in the subsea would see it's a first barrier to the oil uh, like before it comes to the environment so that's the product uh, we work on and i'm going to talk about the uh, uh, engineering optimization that we did on our product and the project execution strategy uh, uh, which we call as the fixed and flexible approach so it's an approach actually set out to transform the project execution process through a more efficient collaboration between the uh, engineering manufacturing and supply chain folks which makes the product more uh, kind of uh, catalog driven with a standard way of engineering execution making the overall process overall execution process more lean so the problem that we had or we had been seeing in the in our product was uh, related uh, as you can see on the screen the uh, the product we worked on is actually perceived as a, a standard product and because it has all the standard geometries and the standard interfaces and it is expected that the product can be delivered with the minimal engineering however in reality the engineering activity consumed an average of 350 engineering hours to generate the product output and customize the product as per the client needs so we first started with the A3 concept with this problem statement, and uh, we started with a target to achieve the engineering execution within 10 hours. So from 350 to 10, that was uh, our target. And it was very important uh, as we are seeing the increasing competitive market and all those things. So as we progressed with this vision, the A3 became uh, much more uh, mature with all the root causes and targeting the root causes and getting much more benefits from the from this program. So this issue actually of this excessive consumption existed because of the variations that we see within the product for different types of projects executed at uh, different locations globally. 
and uh, some of the reasons of these variations are uh, purely to uh, to address the customer needs for the for the product one of the example for ex uh, if we take a very simple example is like just the size and the pressure rating of for the equipment so these variations are actually inevitable because this is coming from the client and we have to deliver it accordingly of course but uh, suppose we deliver a product x in the past and we have all the engineering performed and ready now a new project comes in from a different customer or maybe uh, same customer but with a slightly different change in the configuration they need and we are again performing all the repeated engineering again and again to create all those manufacturing drawings assembly releases assembly uh, model releases testing documentations again so all that was inefficient and repeated engineering activities performed to meet the client needs so these are the some of the variations uh, some of the reasons actually because of which we were seeing so much of consumption and the variations uh, are coming from such reasons the some variations were arising just from internal factors which were like non value adding factors like some site specific preferences uh, for different operating sites globally where this product can be engineered or manufactured or there could be some individual preferences of the engineer who's actually working on the product someone might create a new part uh, not knowing if it was really required or maybe already existed in the system so all this results in accumulating a waste and uh, unnecessary duplication which is i believe a major factor that needs to be guided or uh, controlled using standard operating procedures or efficient product governance but like so these are some of factors uh, there are other factors like the improvements of the product which are adopted over the time in the uh, in the like time frame of 20 years over the past 20 years it results in the different solutions being offered for the different uh, projects different customers in the different time frames and uh, the different solutions being offered for the new orders for the repeat orders of the legacy designs so all these are actually non value adding variables which we wanted to target through this exercise so with the fixed and flexible program we are trying to get rid of these uh, uh, these variables and just cater to customer needs which is the actual need and that too with some predefined boundaries so that's that was the whole target of the of the fixed and flexible program and uh, here i would discuss how we have done this uh, done this and uh, what else we are achieving with uh, these efforts and how, like how we started with our journey so we first started with the uh, study of past deliveries what we have made over the past 20 years and we saw uh, we tried to analyze the upcoming tenders we started with gathering the data and we started with a study uh, studying that data for all the past delivered projects this data actually helped us to look through all the past offerings their assembly components quantities materials uh, choices uh, design features and whatnot and a lot more variables actually to understand what was delivered in the past and how the preferences and market needs are changing and where is it heading towards also uh, our product includes some features or uh, components from oem which are the original equipment manufacturer, the suppliers. So these are the supplier control features and accessories, which most of the time is recommended by our client directly. So it makes it very important to keep an eye on what are the developments and uh, what are those suppliers are marketing uh, recently and what are they advertising as their best industry solution. So we started with all those, uh, all those data in hand and uh, the, all the evaluation of this data actually regarding the preferences, the volume and the trends. And the discussions based on this data with our with the tendering folks the engineering team the especially the client facing people who know what are the client is seeking for it helped us to cut down all the unnecessary variations uh like unnecessary any project specific variations the duplications and it helped us to arrive at the conclusion and define what should be our standard and what is not and it is important to understand for us that what we are going to offer to a new project at a new field that we define as our standard and what we can still offer to a repeat order for an existing operating field because customers who order the product for an existing field want the product to be same in terms of the fit form function as what were what was delivered earlier as the product will interface with the same legacy components so something was delivered 15 years back is it relevant now or not so all these decisions are important at this point of time to if you are uh, going ahead with such kind of activity so all the non-standard offerings will be we will still cater to those, uh, those non-standard offerings but only limited to those repeat orders only and after identifying the standard parts which we will deliver for the all the new projects we will all we also initiated the massive activity of obsolescence management 
where we started cleaning up all the duplicate and unnecessary parts that existed in our engineering database. As the next step, with the conclusion on our standard and non-standard offerings, we defined what is actually fixed and what is flexible. So that was the whole and the basic idea of the program uh, where we are protecting the critical design features uh, of our uh, product from modification that are the fixed elements. But at the same time, we are permitting the project specific changes within some predefined limits to suit the customer needs. Those are the flexible elements. So all this data actually helped us to define the what is fixed and what is flexible for us. The customer only gets to choose from the flexible options that are offered to configure the product as per their needs. So maybe I can, you can see the image on the right hand side at the bottom. So it's a, just an example. If you see like there is a uh, there is a body here and you see some the locking components. These are the fixed elements. The body interfaces. These are again the fixed element that will not allow uh, to change. These are our critical interfaces. However, the client might choose the hydraulic options or the the fittings at the bottom or they might need some different ceiling arrangement. So these are the flexible options. So we are also defining that what are the flexi uh, flexible options we are capturing. We have captured these allowable variations also that these are the options that you have to choose if you want type A or type B or X, Y, Z. All this is coming from the decisions and the judgments we have made on the historical data and uh, potential uh, future trends. So all this actually helps to achieve the vision of the product focus organization that we are trying to heading towards. As the next step, once the engineering has collaboratively decided that uh, what is our standard, what is our fixed and flexible offering, all that is put on paper in the form of options map, which is essentially a kind of catalog uh, uh, or like a, a visual representation of the fixed and flexible offerings. So maybe just for your perspective to uh, let you to show you, uh, I will quickly bring up on the screen how the options map look like. So you see uh, the color coding and uh, of like uh, the shading here. So the green shading that you are seeing here is related to the fixed functionalities and the blue shaded uh, offerings that you are seeing here is related to the flexible functionality. So that's how we are defining for each of our products for different families of the product for different uh, uh, for different verticals. And that's and this option map is actually visually uh, is a visual representation and we communicate this options map and distribute this option map to all the stakeholder holders in the in the downstream operations. The product here, if you can see, is divided into all its features and building blocks uh, at different uh, locations of the component, like on the top side and the bottom side or the middle, what is in the internal board. And uh, all these flexible elements are stated in the options map, which client can choose from to configure their product as per their field requirement. So that's basically the first milestone for the product journey based on which rest of the engineering efforts will be carried out. And uh, further in the slides, I will discuss how we utilize this collated information, this final uh, uh, judgments we have taken that on the options map, how we have used this to achieve the target and of 10 hours and what else we are achieving uh, with these efforts. So I will move on to the next slide. Uh, so as I told earlier, uh, the engineering used to consume an average of uh, 350 hours per project because of all the reasons or variations that I have told, like we were seeing in the past. And now we are aware of those variations because of the data we have in hand. And we have freezed all those variations in the form of options map as the flexible offerings. So we know what to offer. So to reduce this repetitive engineering effort and then the need was actually to pre-engineer those features, those offerings and those building blocks of the product only once like pre-engineer only once and use it again and again as it whenever a project a new like whenever a project ne uh, needs it just reuse that that feature or that component again we further worked with the team of actually software developers to come up with an automation tool and that's how a web-based product configurator tool was developed this configurator is a replica of the flexible offerings uh, that we have on the options map and it allows user to choose from all those flexible options uh, to generate a particular product configuration or the engineering deliverable. So the key here is to uh, pre-engineer all the fixed and flexible elements of the product in the form of the required project deliverables. That is the bill of material or assembly drawings and models for manufacturing, etc., and make them configurable. You, of course, with the help of the tool. And as per the project requirement, we will make them configurable. And that that allows user to make the selections. Uh, the config tool actually helps allow uh, user to make the selections uh, as per the project needs. So it's just that there is a 
software and the coding involved in the uh, background uh, and that's a digital platform developed for that purpose so it's like the master bill of material and master model in our design software and in our plm software that is team center that contains all the pre-engineered configurations uh, configurations and all the fixed and flexible elements that are offered for that particular product and once the configurator is run the configurator tool communicates with the plm software in the background based on the selections that are made in the configurator and it gives the intended configured output uh, engineering outputs and like that are the drawings bill of materials and the uh, documentations etc et so it's basically the use of the configurator here it to make the selections from the drop downs that we have developed it hardly takes five minutes and around half an hour processing time for generating the project specific bill of materials and all other deliverables from the plm software it means if the project requirement are known you can actually get all the in, uh, engineering deliverables created in half an hour or, or 45 minutes. The actual time is consumed actually to review the outputs and release the process uh, and like uh, like in the re release process and some of the and update some of the minor things which are which are out of the capabilities of the configurator. So all this actually takes eight to ten hours, and we were actually getting to that uh, target. Uh, like it is actually a significant reduction in the engineering effort as compared to the previous state. So it's not only about the configurator here. We can make use of such tool only when we have a well-defined product catalog and product offerings, and we know what we have to offer. In absence of such well-defined boundaries, we cannot make repeated use of such automated tool, if even if we have in place. And soon we will go back to our previous state of uh, engineer-to-order kind of environment. And this is not only the engineering effort reduction. There are a lot more associated benefits. It is helping in cutting down actually the all the non-value-adding variables that I talked about initially. And uh, using the product configurator makes it a single channel to execute. Uh, to like all the project uh, projects irrespective of the global location involved so, like this was one of the issues earlier uh, because of uh, the reasons of the variation that we were seeing earlier so there is no room for site specific or individual preferences or any such uh, uh, individual methods uh, in anymore there is no of course there is no manual intervention involved because we have the automation tool in place and during the execution phase so there is no room for engineering errors no rejections and no reworking and so no waiting time as well and as we have a single uh, gateway to execute everything we have the predefined and pre-engineered features and components which are used repeatedly it makes the product governance easy to manage and all the product features whether it is fixed or flexible have respective part numbers and model numbers that are revision controlled so these features go through engineering and manufacturing reviews from our manufacturing sites one time only and once released these can be reused in multiple projects and like as per the project requirement so it provides better control over the product from the change management perspective also and it significantly reduces the lead time for engineering and manufacturing also so that's all about reusing the uh, knowledge and the efforts that we have put up in place uh, 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 and and like only once like efforts are only once and it, it is like we are reusing it again and again it is also like with the with the predefined product offerings and the parallel activities of uh, database cleanup uh, for duplicate offerings it is also helping us to streamline the process starting from the tender stage till the manufacturing and delivery and as there are no room for assumptions, there are no surprises. And at any point of time during the whole product lifecycle, it gives a predictable lead time and product cost as well. So and like these are some of the associated benefits we are uh, getting from the product. Apart from it, we have uh, like in the downstream operations of the manufacturing and supply chain, the unique revision control design features allows the reuse of manufacturing programs, uh, reuse of the CNC programs for a particular feature and hence they don't need to program it again and again so it further saves three weeks in the lead time of the manufacturing which was earlier consumed uh, in programming new codes for a new body machining and the options map and the configurator tool that we have in place has defined body uh, materials the defined assembly components some defined uh, like design features and material choices it helps to perform uh, the value value stream mapping uh, like seeking further improvements and allowing better 
inventory control also and ha like help us to go ahead with the volume based uh, stocking based on the project forecasts so uh, the stocking program that i talked about it actually help uh, also to reduce the waiting time associated with the long lead items and bulk purchase orders uh, that we uh, that we do along with the uh, like with the volume based uh, stocking it helps to reduce the per piece cost of the components in the assembly so that's how apart from the engineering we are seeing the reduced lead time and cost saving in the manufacturing as well as in the uh, supply chain verticals and of course we are not only sharing the benefits uh, with the users or the downstream operations we are also continuously giving and getting the feedbacks uh, on the bad results improvement opportunities uh, some expansion opportunities of the flexible offerings uh, within the port uh, within the product portfolio and from all the stakeholders actually starting from the tendering team to the project team to the manufacturing supply chain installation and the services guys so because like it is also important what what we have today in place it is relevant today but we also need to make sure it remains relevant and updated in future also say five to ten years down the line so to manage the obsolescence and the improvements adopted over the time in terms of the geometry material or market trends for example it needs to go along with the maintenance of this fixed and flexible program so we are continuously asking for feedbacks with each of these stakeholders and also we have uh, set up the guidelines to incorporate these improvements and expansions adopted over the time so uh, moving ahead regarding the benefits to the customer and the uh, return of investment we are seeing so it's uh, my last slide i won't take more than a couple of minutes now uh, so these efforts not only benefiting our organization but also from the customer's point of view uh, the customer is also receiving a product with a reliable uh, reliable i would say and a predictable product performance that too at a reduced price uh, as the product offered and the technology solutions being offered have field proven track record the we have qualification reports readily available functional performance data etc so, so customer gets a clear visibility on the product reliability and everything required is ready on like one plate ready to be served it leaves no room for any surprises or risks and at the same time, due to the overall reduction in the product's lead time, like we are also uh, achieving the on-time delivery. In terms of the return of investment, we are seeing uh, uh, like how, how much, like whatever we have invested uh, in this whole program. So this graph that you see here, it depicts the break-even point for the return of investments versus the returns on the efforts uh, we are uh, like made to the program. This is purely based on actually the engineering efforts put in the program and the saving in hours that we are seeing while running the projects to the configurator. So savings from the program will surpass the uh, uh, hours invested somewhere, I think in uh, early 2023, 20, but considering the cost savings from the manufacturing and inventory management, we will surely see the break even point very early, which is not measured yet, but we don't have the concrete realistic, like realistic data to uh, measure that at the moment because uh, we have not much uh outputs there in the downstream operations yet but definitely it will be significant enough as compared to the engineering savings so that's all actually i had to share about the program today if you have any questions i will try to answer or you can write to me as well so thank you, you can, thank you very much sense. lloyd indeed we have question already in the chat um so we have um the first question from ismail he says this is great idea a uh, great idea of modular design yes. did this compromise the performance or quality of the end product uh not at all actually uh like i would say with this opportunity in place we are actually uh, getting an opportunity to do to improve some of the mistakes non attended mistakes which have been in place like since long so actually it is not not degrading the pro the end product it, first of all the product quality is either it will improve or it will remain the same improve in the in 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 the in this matter that whatever the because we have studied a huge data lake of 450 tubing hangers in the past we know where the problem exists we know where are the where are the issues uh, were there in the past so with these improvements we what whatever we are doing here we are get we are we have the budget we are trying to do something so we are also making some improvements on those lines as well 
in terms of the end product so the quality either it will remain the same in terms of the time we are uh, saving a lot of time in the whole downstream in the whole value stream here especially in the engineering and the supply chain and the manufacturing so the product quality is actually increasing this especially the the knowledge that we have in place the centralized knowledge that we have in place because earlier the knowledge was scattered like everything was happening in, at the different locations globally now a particular team is doing this these efforts and they have the knowledge now and they have the time to improve the product which was not done uh, due to the hassles that is like that, that we generally see during the project execution we are always short of budget which don't get opportunities to improve the product that we have in hand so with all these efforts we are actually trying to or we are actually achieve we are actually seeing the, those things happening and we are getting the constant feedbacks from from supply chain from the manufacturing that we, can you improve this can you improve that and we are, we are re really happy to improve uh, to include those improvements along with these efforts that we are putting Thank you very much, Lloyd. Indeed, we have another question from Ismail. He asks, uh, also, I have a question about the configurator. Was this client-facing or an internal tool for engineers? So it's an internal tool for the engineers. So the client the client facing folks would be but like for within the within our organization would be aware of it they would be aware of the tool they would be aware of the options map options map is a tool or i would say it is a bible to for all the stakeholders if a new project comes in the client facing folks the tendering folks can alarm the p alarm the client okay this is our standard offering so that's the focus that's the vision of a product focus organization this is our offering this is our product you want it or not so of course like client is god of course so but it they, like there is another aspect that comes with it that is the cost if of if the client knows that their their requirement is something like uh, overly estimated or something of that sort they will surely go ahead with our standard offerings so we will also judge and and balance those uh, those scenarios uh, with the with the like with, with the business opportunities we are seeing the the volume that is uh, um, that is coming from the client so actually but these things are not shared with the client only when the client comes in that this is what i need at that time the tendering folks or the project uh, folks will discuss with them this is what we have we, this is what we are offering this is a part of the configurator if you want something apart from it this will incur more cost to you from the engineering point of view so that's how it is kind of dealt with the client sometimes they agree sometimes they don't but that's how the nature of the business is sure thank you very much uh, we have then some feedback on remarkable design improvement they are telling you significant saving and changes in thinking and then i have a question um from giuseppe i understood that this is a big technical improvement with impressive results i miss the organizational impact on the project uh so am i missing the organizational impact of the project i'm not able to actually get the essence uh, of the, the question the question so so giuseppe can you explain us what you mean like um maybe we have a technical improvement in terms of you know the quality of the product itself uh the improvement of the cross-functional team so how did the, the team improve to working together so not just improve of a technical level of a product but also the way the a project is managed and also the way a team works together yes the, like the cross-functional team is always required so it's not like only engineering can impose to all the downstream operations that what is the best for us engineering will always try to reduce their work but actually engineering cost to be honest like it is a kind of peanut in like as compared to what the like the manufacturing cost and the transportation cost and all those uh, costs are there so when we started with this program at that time on itself we engaged with all the cross functional teams and told them this is what we are going to offer how this will impact you like first we came up with the best possible judgment from our side that this is what we are going to offer with all the engineering explanations behind that with all the logical explanations but the cross function environment was always required we all we, we also did some uh, improvements uh, on the product uh, as i told earlier so while making those improvements the 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 feedbacks from the manufacturing are they able to manufacture and manufacture or not 
are the machines capable of this functionality or not so all this uh, cross functional involvement on the supply chain side if you are doing some bulk purchasing if you are uh, comparing some cost as compared to the like if you have some quality requirements on some particular product we have to we out like uh, compare the cost with the uh, with the different uh, vendors who supply the assembly components to us so all this kind of communication ha happen with the buyer and category managements and all those things so like it is not possible to uh, accomplish this achievement without the involvement of the cross-functional team. So yes, it was definitely there and it really helped us a lot to achieve what we, where we are today. And Larry is asking, uh, Lloyd, does the value of the lessons learned far outweigh the cost saving long term? Uh, I would still need some uh, better explanation on the question. Uh, value um, of the lessons, can you? Yeah, the lesson learned. So what you learned, uh, Darren, maybe you understand better. Um, the lesson learned that you yes, gained right. from a change in, in the work, yeah. do they overcome? Yeah, I think, I, think, I think you've got significant cost savings here, but, but this is a, a big change for the organization and the engineering teams really to start thinking about this uh, fixed and flexible and reusing knowledge yes so definitely cost savings were th and definitely there for the and uh, not even in the long term i would say we will see start seeing the re uh, returns in the very short term and uh, uh, but I'm not able to compare from the question that how the lessons learned will compare with the cost savings because lessons learned, like whatever the lessons learned we have. So like we have some investment on, on the place which you see on the screen uh, highlighted with the red line that is the investment. Uh, and along with this investment, we have a lots of lesson learned and the centralized knowledge for the product in place and a product governance team is in place. And apart from it, we are having the cost savings uh, in the long term as well, as you might have seen from my previous slide. Uh, we were having the 30 percent, uh, not uh, it's about the delivery time. All right. Uh, so I think I just uh, told about the reduction in the delivery time. But yeah, the cost savings and all those like time is also equivalent to money. So like we have the three weeks to one uh, one week reduction in the manufacturing programming. And uh, we have the engineering savings as well. And uh, with the help of the bulk purchasing, we are seeing the great benefits in the in the uh, with the stocking program as well. So there are uh, obviously great great benefits uh, uh, in the long term. And I think we would be start seeing the profits in within one year from this program. Yeah, and and, and also low it maybe taking this thinking into into other products and other projects. So not yes. Uh, not invest in engineers time over and over again reconfigurating the products of the customer yes actually it is uh, it is linked to the efficient use of the talent that uh, that we have it's not so people are just re like repeatedly doing the same engineering activities again and again just because of a small change for example like just a a downhole line or a line change maybe in the product they, they, they just need that and Engineer is used like will start from the scratch and again consume 350 to 400 hours. So it is a very like uh, inefficient use of the talent in the uh, in the first place. So as we started, like the great benefit or the uh, first uh, benefit, I would say we are seeing within our organization is that the engineering team which was dedicated for this product. It was a team of 15 engineers. It is completely dissolved now. And we are just having two to three engineers for their team, and all the you know, all those engineers which were there, uh, they are moved to the different uh, different product groups. So, like I would say, it is a great achievement from the organization point of view. So that's how uh, like uh, we are making the use of like efficient use of the engineers now. And of course, this uh, this uh, uh, like fixed and flexible approach that whatever we are doing now. Uh, this program like seeing the benefits from our product uh, the other uh, other product product groups has also started with these initiatives and so they are a bit new at, at this stage our product is a bit mature enough but uh, we will be starting see, starting to see the results from their product lines as well and that's how slowly it is spreading across all the products line within our organization okay so 
I think this is linked to what Larry is also adding now about the building on the foundation of this success to the next advance in engineering. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't know, other, do you, we have other questions? We had a very active session of questions indeed, uh, Darren and Lloyd. Um, if we don't have any extra question, I think we can thank you again, Lloyd, for being here. Thank you all the audience for participating to this session and for the active questions. Thank you, Darren for Thank having you. the facilitation and have a good day, evening, afternoon, and see you later mm. in other sessions. Mm. Thank you guys. All right. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you everyone for participating. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.